Are you sure you want to do this? <laughs> the, guy, the guy's a dadgum trainer. He wasn't that good at taping ankles, and now he got him up here critiquing me. <laughs> no, no. There'll be nothing nice said in this next segment. <laughs> Any uh, any last minute questions for Coach before our for our next segment? No. Okay. These are these are the people that voted for him for governor, right? I believe so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's all 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 twenty five. <laughs> yeah. He said a lot worse than me, Blake. I'm here to tell the truth about him. Yeah. And it works both ways. <laughs> And welcome back to the Champions Club here on Tuesday nights. The T.O. Show. Nebraska Athletic Director Tom Osborne's final chat with us in front of our live studio audience and online at Huskers.com. The show, of course, presented by T.O. Haas, Ty Renato, a tradition of trust since 1947, and the Nebraska FFA Students of the Lifeline for Jobs here in Nebraska. Believe in the future of agriculture jobs by helping to support your local FFA. Go online to NEFFAFoundation.org and give today to the I Believe in the Future of Ag campaign brought to you on behalf of the FFA by CHS, Resources for Enriching Lives, and by Pinnacle Bank, the way banking should be. Well, we, we, we told you we had a few guests coming up, Coach, tonight, and we uh, brought some people up to, uh, to reminisce, tell some stories. We've, we've, we've got some, some people here. I see them. I see them. To talk here, yeah. here in a moment, and also we have somebody on the phone lines we'll get to uh, here in a second as well. But ladies and gentlemen, a good round of applause. Doak Ostergaard with us here as he was a member of the uh, kind of training staff under Coach Osborne, current outreach director at the University of Nebraska. And welcome. We appreciate you stopping by and uh, joining us here on, uh, on Coach's show. Thanks for coming up. Good to be here, I think. But I'm well aware that I'll be a sitting duck for Coach. That's usually my role. We'll try and flip it a little bit and try and get even a few parting shots before he leaves the ADR. Coach, tell people, give, give people an idea of your relationship with, with Doak and uh, the, the things that, uh, what he meant to the, uh, the program, what he was, uh, the importance that he had on your, on your staff during uh, your time as head coach in Nebraska and uh, your relationship with Doak. Okay. <clears throat> well, Doak had uh, absolutely no importance to the <laughs> athletic department. Uh, <laughs> I'll give you an example. Uh, I had my knee operated on, and you know, if you know anything about knees, you know your knee bends one direction. And uh, but Doak didn't understand that, and so I come in with this bad knee, cartilage taken out, very sore, and he proceeds to bend it the wrong way, and um, so he slowed down my recovery by at least three months. And um, but we tolerate him. We keep him around. And um, but he, he did do a good job of taping ankles. <laughs> There's some truth to that story. George Sullivan, that was his patient. Coach was his patient, right? George would take him, put him in the whirlpool, and then George would go in his office and fall asleep. And Coach would stay in the whirlpool until we shut the lights off. So I would go get him out. And if you notice, if you ever notice, Coach would be about three inches taller if he would straighten his legs, but I did not try and extend it. He's, he's uh, embellished in that story a little bit. I'm sure you've got plenty of, uh, plenty of things locked away, plenty of stories that you would, that you would like to, to throw out there. Is there anything family safe that we can uh, throw out there? I know Coach was a practical 
joker. He was yeah. he was a joke guy that many people don't know. He liked to he liked to play jokes on people from time to time. Yeah, he was the mastermind. Then he'd get everybody wants to be on his side. I'd be against him and everybody else. They'd want to be on his team, and so he could recruit everybody to help him do his dirty work. But he would pull he pull a few things on some other guys. One of the guys I think we're going to hear from in a little bit who about killed. I'm out there just trying to keep him from getting hurt, and he's trying to kill him after practice. But you'll hear about it. You'll remember it. Okay. Um, I'm looking forward to that episode. <laughs> let's will be badly distorted. Let's <laughs> let's bring him on right now. He's uh, joining us on our Verizon guest hotline, powered by Nokia Siemens Networks, Norfolk native and uh, former Husker standout, and now live from Atlanta, Georgia, Kevin Raymakers with us now here on the phone lines. Kevin, welcome. You, uh, you're you on with Coach Osborne, Doak, and a live studio audience. Thanks for joining us tonight. How are you doing? Well, we're, we're hearing about Coach as a bit of a, a, a practical jokester, and it sounds like you were someone that got caught in the middle of, of one of Coach's jokes after practice one day. Do you want, you want to care to expand on this with, uh, with Coach Osborne? Yeah, you want to be a jokester. One thing people don't realize is Coach is a client. I mean, he's got a great humor, but we play Oklahoma State on a Thursday night. Not sure why you get one game on a Thursday night because they have classes the next day, but we were going to have a conversation like that. And he won 200 points. So all of a sudden, I was trying to recruit Scott Oliver and Lance Longberg and Weaver. Nobody wanted to help me down straight. So I was going to leave him in the house and go back to the locker room and he just look in his eyes like he was going to So the press jumps all over it. You know, coach doesn't talk to me until like the following Tuesday. <laughs> Just giving me these terrible looks all the time. And everyone's coming up to me, including Doke and all the trainers, other coaches, people in the cafeteria, staff, saying, oh, coach is so mad at you. So it gets totally blown out of proportion. I'm nervous he's going to take my scholarship. I'll be riding the bench the rest of my you know, senior year. So he waits until the bowl game. And we were in the Cook Pavilion back then. And I was walking off the field. And Brennan Stye, Zach Weger, Lance Lumber, all the fatties jump on me. <laughs> and I cannot move. I can't get up. And I'm screaming with my mouth open. And there's Coach Osborne standing over the top of me just shaking his head. <laughs> well, next thing I know, he's got a Gatorade cooler. I think, you know, four or five trainers had to help him pick it up. <laughs> and rather than just pour it on me, he slowly pours it in my mouth. <laughs> Drowning on the turf, literally like gagging, kicking, screaming, telling these guys to get off. <laughs> so that's how coach got me back. <laughs> that was known as waterboarding. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the CIA picked it up from us. <laughs> and uh, the thing about Kevin was that uh, he came down here to school and he didn't realize that going to class was part of the deal. <laughs> you know? He thought all he had to do was show up for practice. And uh, finally it came That's down. That's what you told me when you were crazy. Yeah. <laughs> just, just show up and practice. And uh, so it kind of came down to the point where we had to give Kevin a, uh, an ultimatum and let him know that school was part of the deal. And today it's amazing. The guy has shown a great deal of competence. He runs a business. Uh, when you first would have met him, you'd have thought this would never happen. <laughs> and so uh, we're proud of you, Kevin. I'm glad you survived the dunking, but you deserved every bit of it. <laughs> oh, I know. Now, now, Kevin, did you did you have a chance to respond to this this dunking, as Coach called it, at some point? Did you have a, a practical joke yourself, or did you get did you get the uh, the big boys, the offensive linemen, back at some point in time? No, are you kidding me? Those guys are like his little cronies, man. You couldn't do nothing <laughs> to them. So, you know, the bottom line is that coach is great to me. Uh, going to miss the hell out of him. I think the whole state's going to miss him being around there. But uh, I can't thank him enough for what he's done for me. And, hey, if that's all he was going to do to me, then that's, that's all right with me. But the doors he's opened for me and the things he's done for me personally, I'll, I'll, I'll never be able to thank him enough. 
Ke huh? Kevin, you're getting out of character. We're supposed to say the <laughs> nasty things about him. <laughs> well, you told me I couldn't cuss on the phone and make fun of him, so I can't tell all the stories. Well, thanks for being on, Kevin. We're proud of you. Doing a great job, and I'll, I'll be seeing you down the road. And I'm oh, sure that we'll throw a little ice water on you from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Kevin. Kevin, thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Kevin Raymakers, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Live from Atlanta, Georgia. We appreciate uh, the uh, Norfolk native stopping by and uh, talking with Coach. Uh, you have a favorite, favorite uh, Kevin memory besides the, the waterboarding episode, <laughs> episode <laughs> that, that jumps off? A guy that was a, a good player for you, a really good player in 93, I know. Mm -hmm. well, Kevin was a, was a very good player. Came from a relatively small school, Norfolk Catholic, and and like a lot of guys, you know, he had he had a long ways to come when he when he got here. But uh, and Charlie McBride just scared the devil out of him when he first got here. But uh, you know, these guys got to they got to know Charlie better, and uh, uh, by the end they would have done anything for uh, Charlie, and I think he would have done anything for them. He had, a, he had a really uh, fine relationship with those players, just like uh, Milt Tenniper had with that offensive line. And uh, so there was a, a lot of closeness among those teams and uh, a lot of guys that really pulled together. And those, it's been interesting because those friendships have endured, and you still see those guys together, you know, at games, at different functions. And uh, I think it'll probably be that way the rest of their lives. All right, I'm going to give you the opportunity. I don't know if you've, you had the opportunity to have the final say around Coach Osborne, but I believe there was a video, Doak, that you were, have been trying to find the last couple of days that, that caught Coach Osborne dancing yeah. at his daughter's wedding. Is that correct? Is that, do you, have, you didn't find it, of course, but get, you've got to give me a little breakdown of how Coach Osborne well, can break it down. How much time? Floor. How much time do we have? You take, you know, just take it away for right now. Go for we, it. We got a little background. Co I said, Coach would always have somebody doing his dirty work. And that particular year, he had Mike Grant. And Mike Grant, he had the technology that I didn't, so he could produce all these elaborate posters and whatnot at Coach's suggestion that would be poking fun at me. And uh, it escalated and escalated, and, I, and finally, I knew I had to get both of them, and I had to, I had to top them somehow, because uh, they'd been to Kinko's, they laminated. They found a picture of me on the beach with a couple of girls that <laughs> they, they were very well tanned, and I had my mid-Nebraska tan. And, and so it was very easy to take some shots at me. Well, then um, I happened to get a hold of some video of him dancing at his daughter's wedding, so Rick Swigger and I uh, put together a video. We didn't know when we were going to use it, but it started off with Mike at the beginning. Mike had two nicknames. He had uh, Freaky G and Kool-Aid because his head was too big for his body. He, he's grown into his head now, but at the time his head was too big for his body. So um, anyhow, the video started off and it had a, a football player standing there with a Kool-Aid head on there and Swigger was doing the voice and asking if this was Kool-Aid and then it flickered back and forth and said no nah, it must be Freaky G and then it played Super Freak by uh, Rick James and then he was in the same stance that Coach had some photographs for football school camp you know so there was some comparison of their throwing form and where Mike got that and then Swigger went on to do an interview with Coach about uh, it led to dancing. Coach liking to dance and being very pleased that the hotel was going to be close to some nightclubs in Miami because we were going to the Orange Bowl. <laughs> then it cut away to uh, Rodney Dangerfield and part of Caddyshack where he says, come on everybody, let's dance, and Journey comes on. And then we had the video of Coach. Now Coach isn't slow dancing. He's shaking it. <laughs> if you can imagine that. And the, and the video, the video is a little dark, but we got the initials T.O. and an arrow flashing at it as it's following him around the room. And we still needed a time to, to show this. And just by chance, it was bowl preparation, so we were in the cook, indoors, not going to have a chance to show it so everybody could see it then. And there's a Saturday practice, we had recruits in, 
It was nice out. Coach decided to go out in the stadium. Rick Swigger knew how to turn the big screen. The team's practicing, and then playing the game just happened to be there getting pregame footage. And we're following coach around while Wes is on the big screen. And he wouldn't, he wouldn't make any face or look up, but I know he knew it was up there. So okay, so you want me to react to all that? <laughs> no, I get the last word. That's what that's what I was told here, right? Well, speaking of weddings and uh, <laughs> all this type of thing, Doak has arrived at the ripe old age of fifty, and nobody will have him. <laughs> so, if anybody out there in Husker Nation is looking for a very mediocre husband. <laughs> It's 50 years old. <laughs> Please call in tonight. And <laughs> All right. I like. I did. I did. Hear one more? Oh, yeah. Four. Yeah, because I know where this is going to lead. I could tell Coach was choking up when Kevin was on the phone, and Kevin's going soft on him. We got we to gotta go back and, and, and uh, Reevaluate things here. How many people here thought Coach retired too soon in '97? Okay. Well, you know, he, obviously he had a promise, right? He, everybody knows about the promise he made. He had to keep this promise. Well, um, he also, I, I, he was paying attention to politicians. I think all along, thinking they had it pretty easy. So he wanted an easy job. And the promise he made, to, really made, was to himself to catch the biggest walleye. And that's why he walked away. And the point of this is, all those dark years we've had, we have to blame on him, because he left too early. So let's not be too soft on him. <laughs> no, I said I get the last word. I, <laughs> well, that's amazing. <laughs> I think, Doak, it's time for you to return to your seat. <laughs> there we go, ladies and gentlemen. A round of applause for Doak Ostergaard. Stop and die. <laughs> Let's take a time out. Our show will continue live from Champions Club in Lincoln, the Tom Osborne Radio Show, brought to you by T.O. Haas Tyronado.